Football Manager wants you to lose. It throws a seemingly unfair amount of problems at you and your club in order to compensate for not having a difficulty setting, because it wants you to keep playing for another season and another season and another season after that. Or at least that is how it can feel when your squad is plagued with injuries or when you're getting it in the ear from your best player because they want to leave for a bigger club or even when the fixtures are so congested you could barely finish a sandwich between attending press conferences and playing actual matches. Aw oh man, does anyone ever win at this game? You don't win, you just do a little better each time. In today's video we're going to reel off a few healthy habits you can get yourselves into that counteract a few of the noteworthy FM biases. Let's start with injuries then, and one unwritten rule in Football Manager that I think we can all agree on is that at any given point at least one first team player is going to be sidelined with injury. And whilst you will give due attention to an injury by resting a player and sending them to a specialist or a doctor to maximise their recovery rate, the AI won't give two shits about their star striker having a dislocated elbow and you can bet your wage budget they'll be starting a slightly injured player against you regardless of their condition. This is not only irritating at the time, but over the course of the season it means that they are probably fielding a stronger team in many more matches than you are, and it can put you at a disadvantage against rivals. So how can you get over the hurdle of having more injuries? Well, FM Immortal believe there are three angles to overcoming this bias. One is to make sure that the AI pay for their ignorance and set tackle harder and man mark slightly injured players with your most aggressive tacklers. It is a bit dirty, maybe, but forcing opponents into early substitutions and potentially ruling them out for a few weeks is unfortunately for them a fantastic manoeuvre from your club's perspective. The second countermeasure to combating injuries is to use every training session slot at your disposal wisely. Be sure to rest those who are in need and listen when players' representatives say that they are looking a little jaded. At the very least here, I usually give a player two or three days off from training if I cannot otherwise afford to drop them for an upcoming match. You can set training intensity levels at an individual level. So, for those who've played in a match very recently, drop down their intensity, whilst maintaining a higher intensity for those who didn't feature. Pay attention also to the impact each training type has on squad fatigue. Trying more technical or tactical exercises to maintain sharpness when fatigue across the squad is high. The third approach here is to not be afraid to use low knees as emergency backups. Even when you promise an AI manager that they're going to get more regular playing time, you'll piss off a few managers, yes, and other clubs will lose trust in you. But having decent reserve players that you don't fork out transfer budget on, nor have to commit to keeping happy in the long term, can be a game changer. One other honourable mention on combating injuries in this game is to ensure that you have a decent physio team behind you. It can be an afterthought in this game to look at who you inherit in your coaching staff when you start a new save, but it's worthwhile addressing capability deficits in these areas to make sure that the light injuries are on the lower end of the predicted out for however many days scale. The next incredibly similar focus is fixture congestion. This often goes hand in hand with player injuries, but sometimes it can feel like football manager wants to screw you over and eke out a Jurgen Klopp style reaction from you when the schedule is rearranged and forces you into something absurd like 12 games in 21 calendar days. It'll always feel like you get the rough end of the stick with these rearrangements, even when you're competing in the same four tournaments as your league rivals. But the solution here is actually quite simple. Stay on top of what the disrupted fixture list has done to your training schedule, and remember that momentum is everything in Football Manager. So don't change your tactic drastically during congested periods. A good habit here is to look at your schedule every fortnight and I step into the training calendar to manually overwrite whatever doesn't look healthy or helpful. With injury and fixture rescheduling in mind, you should always look out for when a training schedule hasn't updated, particularly if a fixture has moved more than once, as sometimes in place of your usual and recommended recovery slash rest days after matches, you can find full training days have remained the focus and even sometimes match practice which is going to run your players into the ground with fatigue. Having at least two players with full familiarity in each position in your tactic is essential for navigating the busier periods of the season, without a massive tactical overhaul needed to be made on a game-by-game -game basis. And, if you can start those periods with a win, you'll find that a game every three days or so can actually bring about a very good run of form. 
The next area of the game that the football manager seems to want you to fail in though is transfer windows. Let's face it, 95% of players in this game want to move on to bigger clubs for more money and as soon as possible and the AI is never likely to meet your valuation on either side of a transfer negotiation. Losing a player, particularly an influential squad member or talented youngster, can be devastating to your team's morale and can quickly translate to poor performances. We've made a video looking into all the considerations you ought to make before deciding upon selling a key player and the ups and downs that comes along with. So go check our channel out for this video which we've linked down in the description and loads more tips, tricks and even experiments about FM23. As a quick rule of thumb though, you should always first decline a bid for a player that you'd prefer to keep, regardless of how high that offer is. Then, if the player comes to speak to you about this, I've had the most success by asking the player to evaluate themselves, having mentioned that the finances weren't quite right. Nine times out of ten, they price out the bidding club by going multi-millions above the original bid value. If a bidding club then does meet the amount though, try to delay the transfer to the end of the season wherever possible. This one I've had less success with myself, but team cohesion is not something to be sniffed at in FM23, and even if you have a replacement lined up, you're often sacrificing a season's performances by guaranteeing poorer form across the business end of the season by selling a player in January. My most successful season in this game, including an almost treble with Valencia and an unbeaten league season and domestic treble in the Eredivisie with Feyenoord, have come on the back of minimal transfer activity, going to show that having a close-knit group of players who know how to play alongside each other well translates into good results. The last thing I'll say about FM throwing challenges at you though is that your coaching team are not always to be trusted. They sometimes lure you into making the wrong calls and when prompted for recommendations can deliver some absolute stinkers. Go with your gut on this one and learn what to ignore from the frequent suggestions your team meetings will doubtless bring about. But don't be fooled by my episodic rants about injuries, transfers and fatigue. I of course love this game and rarely put it down. It's a fantastic simulation of the modern match and the stories you can weave alongside these challenges are what make Football Manager absolutely brilliant. You may even be surprised to hear that my next video is going to be from the exact opposite perspective of this one. So if you want to hear me talk about how Football Manager wants you to win, be sure to hit that subscribe button. That's going to be all for today though folks, so I hope you've liked this video and found it helpful. Let us know down in the comments if you've got any tried and tested strategies for mitigating disruption in FM23. And until next time my friends, adios.